I'm going to cover a little bit about what Flip Classroom is all about. Um, this is the menu for today's session. I will talk to you about Flip Classroom, how does a Flip Classroom look like typically, and why are we doing Flip Classroom. And then I'll hand over the time to Sally. She will come and walk through with us the Google Apps, and then there will be some hands-on along the way on how to use some of the Google Apps. And Finally, what I'll do is I'll talk to you about some of the challenges about flipping classroom and provide you with some resources so that you can carry on with your flip classroom effort if you want to uh, jump in and give it a shot, right? Uh, before I start, let's take a look at this video. Okay, so what he actually did was to briefly sum up what flip classroom is about for us. Aaron Sam is actually the guy who first uh, coined the, the flip classroom concept. But flip classroom didn't really uh, start or begin with him. It actually started a long time ago. Because some of the concepts you see here, especially when it talks about um, asking the students to view a video or go to some online resources or maybe even to, to read some other resources provided in some other manner, could be a possibility of flip. But in those days, we don't call it flip because there's no such terms yet. Um, so what exactly is flip classroom? Uh, a flip classroom, basically what, what we are talking about is we flip the classroom concept from a teacher-centered kind of learning environment into a student-centered learning environment. You know, I remember, uh, I may not be a lecturer here, but I remember as a student when I was in school, uh, I, I'm not the ADHD kind, but I'm not the kind that love to sit down and stick my butt on the chair either. I like to talk to my friends, I like to, uh, I like to play my eraser and things like that. And I, I typically found my teachers in school very, very boring, especially in my primary school. And I remember when I was trying to learn the multiplication table, it really, really like got into my spine. And, and in, I, I mean, I'm not young, but in my days, right, the teachers whack our, our hand with rulers when we cannot remember. I, I don't know whether you come from the same era, but I'm, I'm that old. So I remember there was once I'm supposed to remember uh, 8 times 9. And I just couldn't figure out why on earth I, do I need to know 8 times 9. Secondly, I, I cannot figure out what exactly is 8 times 9. So I got all the whacking that I, I can get in class. Until one fine day, I met uh, somebody else who told me, Whenever you do a times table, you just need to remember this picture. So the picture that this person shared, shared with me at that point of time was uh, for three, uh, three, the multiplication table of three. So the first picture is a number three, and then the next picture was three groups of three apples. So basically it's three times three. So she told me that whenever you look at the multiplication, the first number you think about should be the number of groups that you want to uh, you want to have. Then the next number that you see should be the number of items in every group. So there was three groups of three apples, and then there's three. So she told me, just remember, three groups of three apples, in total you'll get nine apples if you count. So next time when you have multiplication table, if you have an issue, then in your brain you just figure out all the pictures and then start counting. Now, I don't like apples, so I decided to change them to bananas. But it worked for me. It really, really did work. And so, the flipped classroom concept, basically, instead of having a teacher in front trying to teach the students something uh, and try to drill onto the students what it may mean in terms of the content and, and the lecture and the topics, it switched the whole entire learning uh, responsibility onto the students so that the students are free to inquire, free to learn, free to grasp the whole entire lesson at their own pace. So flipping classroom is, is basically that, flipping the role of the teachers and the students. Uh, flipping classroom is a pedagogical model. It's not a technology or it's not a technical tool that we are talking about. It is an idea, it is a pedagogy that we are trying to embrace. It is about uh, shifting our paradigm from being a, uh, in a lecture classroom where we have a front-facing kind of teaching to something whereby everybody can participate and hands-on and learn as they go kind of concept. In typical model for flip classroom, we have uh, short videos, lectures, that are recorded and then students watch them at home. 
And then when they come to class, when they come to a room like that, what they are doing will be their homeworks or the assignments, so-called. This is a typical model of what a flipped classroom will look like. But a flipped classroom is also where students become the content creator. So they no longer just uh, participate as a passive students, they participate as an active learner. Sometimes we may give them certain content and say, hey, this is, this is the topic I'd like you to take a look at. Will you curate some of the information and then put together a presentation for the rest of us to learn together with you? And then what happened to us then as uh, tutors, teachers, or, or even facilitators? What we are doing is we are trying to then step in to help the students to expand whatever content that they have, uh, correct some of the concepts that they may have grasped wrongly when they do their research, or even help them to unpack certain concepts which they may not have been able to understand on their own. So uh, we talk about the flipped classroom in all this manner, but really the flipped classroom is a pedagogy. It is something that is pretty new, although it has been around for a few years, and, and there's really a lot more research that's going on and there's a lot more development, and if you were to continue to follow on even after this course is over, you will find that the whole entire uh, pedagogy and ideas will, will continue to shift and change and just model to become better and better. In fact, in NIE, we have a group of flippers. Uh, they, they come together and share with one another their personal experience when they do flip classroom. And Dr. Ashley Tan and Henry from my department they, they typically meet up with this group of uh, lecturers once in a, a month or once in two months to, to do some form of discussion. And if you are interested, you can always email us and we can include you into some of this uh, tea break session or discussion session. Okay. I want to show you another video. This is very interesting. This demonstrates to you what typically a flipped classroom will look like in a day, all right? So typically in a classroom, this is what we will see, you know, some students falling asleep, some catch up, some couldn't, some find your lessons or my lessons boring because I'm, I'm talking about the content too slowly, they have already read. So what we do in flipped classroom is when we present the content before the student come to class, the slower one can repeatedly watch the videos over and over again to grasp the concept. Those who are fast learner, they can skip certain part of the video or in fact maybe they just watch through once and that's it for them. And then when they come to class, we can differentiate the learners uh, by dif differentiating them whether they are the better, the faster ones or the slower one. Those who are hands on, those who prefer uh, to learn in different methods and get them into groups and then begin to do collaborative learning or project-based learning. It can even be experiential learning. The flipped classroom model is basically just like any other learning models. Uh, in fact, what you see here is, uh, looks like the experiential learning models. This is taken from the URL here. You can always read the article. This lady has got some research done on uh, flipped classroom. Now, typically when we introduce a lesson, uh, sometimes we like to use a hook to interest the students, to get them into uh, the, the lessons and get them interested. Uh, so what we do is sometimes we may provide games. On the top right corner, if you see, there's experience. Uh, we may have experiments. We may have community projects or certain activities for them. Sometimes when we, when we provide certain activities for them, whether it's in class or when they're at home, what we want to do is to get them excited about a certain topic that they may be learning. For example, I remember when my teacher wanted to teach me about certain concept about how a plant grows. Uh, the, the teacher never asked me to, okay, now watch how a plant grows over the next uh, few years. But no, the teacher gave me a couple of red beans and green beans and said, now nah, go and grow your own plant. And then, uh, and, and inside my heart, I'd be wondering, grow, grow my own plant? She never talked about it for a few days. And then uh, one week later, she says, so how many of you, your plant has been growing? That kind of thing. So it got me excited and interested. So that could be a hook that we get the students in uh, to, to be interested with a certain topic. And because of that hook, then when we present the content in video or whether we ask them to do reading at the bottom right corner, uh, you will see that it could be videos. It can be audio lecture, need not necessarily be video. Uh, it can be very 
rich, uh, content-rich website that you ask them to go to. It may be some online chats. It may even be some forum discussion, something that you get them to go on to get their, their content knowledge, uh, something that will complement or rather uh, uh, capture what the essence of the lesson could be. That is your content, your lecture presentation. That hooks them on. So for the faster learner, they may find that, oh, your video talks about photosynthesis and whatever, whatever. I want to go and find out more. For the slower learners, they may say, hey, what exactly is this about? I want to, I want to hear my lecturer again. I want to read about this again. Then this learner can go through over and over again the same video lecture or same audio lecture. So when we do a flip, we, the educator suggested activities and, and the content typically are pushed to the students before they come for class. So they do this at home. Now, I, I do understand that sometimes we will feel that, oh, we ask the student to do all this at home, then it will uh, extend our curriculum time, right? That means because I don't have to teach during curriculum and time anymore, uh, they, I kind of like double the time or, or rather have more time. Uh, yes and no. Yes, because you uh, can do other things during the curriculum time. No, because um, you're not asking the students to sit for another lecture at home. What you're trying to tell them is, now instead of giving you homework, I'm asking you to look at the contents that I'm providing. And there's no homework for you. There may be some very simple one, two minute activities to get you going, or there could be one or two simple assessment, self-paced assessment for you to understand whether you grab the concept, that kind of thing. It, the time that the students spend at home to watch a content shouldn't be longer than what typically the amount of time the student need to, to spend on the homework. Say for example, if you are a math teacher and the homework requires the student to spend maybe 20 minutes, then your lecture and whatever activities packed together should be about that amount of time. It shouldn't be longer than that because then it's not fair for them. In a sense, otherwise they'll be like whole day and whole night they'll be watching videos. Then why do they come to school in a sense? So we push the content to them when they're at home, they get to know about all the topics and the content and whatever we feel that we need to teach before they come to class. Then what do we do with them when they come to class? We can break them into small groups, we can get them into uh, different kind of activities. Now this particular so what here talks about the kind of activities we may want to do after they view certain content. For example, we can ask the student to block. They can be doing their individual block. They can be doing group blogs. They can even be creating website or wiki. They can create their own reflective videos. They can record audios. They can also sit for certain tests. Uh, this kind of activity could be uh, packed together with your pre-class uh, lecture. It may also be taking place in class itself. So these are some of the activity that we can do to help them make meaning of what they have grasped and learned after they have gone through the lectures that you recorded. And then, now what after that? What we want them to do is to really demonstrate what they have learned. Uh, it's not just enough to understand and to absorb the knowledge. What we want them to do is to be able to apply what they have learned to be able to articulate what they have learned, demonstrate or even illustrate what they have learned. So in this case, you will find that just now what I share about student becoming content creator will come in very handy. Uh, you will find that maybe in our class, uh, typically nowadays what we can do is we can get them into small groups. We can tell them, hey, this is a case. Can you, based on this concept that you have learned, explore a little bit more, find solution to solve this and then present this. Or maybe group A, you talk about this content topic, and group B, this topic, and group C, this other topic. You can express your content and your knowledge in a certain way. One could be in a website. Two, you may start a blog. Three, you may want to do a video recording. Four, you may want to just research on all the videos you can find in YouTube and curate five best videos, that kind of, that kind of activities. And more than that, you can also do some hands-on to help them to uh, integrate whatever that they have learned into something that is more practical. So the flip classroom model is just like any typical learning models, but what we are doing is we flip the content, the lecture, to the students at home, and then when they come to class, we are doing homework and activity that will help to integrate, that will help to consolidate all their learning, to help them to apply what they have learned from home into certain activities, right?
Now, why do we want to flip? Uh, typically, flipping will require a lot of effort. Why? Because most of us do not have our lectures already recorded, right? And we also don't have any audio recording. Uh, in fact, to do that, we may need to do that. Uh, we may need to do recording. We may even need to do more research on, online to find uh, suitable videos or lectures for a student to watch. Um, we may need to even um, restructure our class activity just to suit this kind of purpose. We may need to think about how to differentiate our students because typically in our lecture or in our class, we may not even have time to differentiate our learners. So then why do we want to flip? We flip because we understand that one size does not fit all. Uh, 20 over years ago when I was in class, I already realized that I cannot fit into a typical classroom whereby everybody sit down nice and you know, like little lamb listening to the teacher. I already know I, I, I was not like that. And what more about nowadays when every student comes to class with a mobile phone, some of them comes with their own laptop or iPad. There's a lot of distractions that goes on, but more than that, every student wants to express themselves in different ways. They, they learn and they absorb information differently. So we realize that one type of uh, style does not fit all. The industrial style of school does not fit everybody. We want to differentiate the different style for different people. But more than that, we, we, want, to, we want to help our learners to become uh, somebody who is interested to find out more. We want to change our current class classrooms uh, uh, into a place whereby the students are free to ask questions. I, I think that there is, uh, I think most of us know in Singapore, typically in, in school, in my days especially, uh, is teachers talk, students keep quiet. When I talk, you don't talk, that kind of thing. Uh, while it may not be necessarily the same right now in some of our classroom, but very much so, you still see that a lot of Singapore students are those who keep quiet in class. Uh, when, you, when you keep quiet and when you start to keep all the questions inside you, there's, there's only a few ways you can express. One is maybe after class, you try to find research and then you learn and then you keep all your knowledge to yourself. Second would be, uh, you just keep it there and then after a while, you just forget about it. And typically, most of the time, our students are those who, oh, now I have a question, I don't ask, never mind, later on. It's not important. If, I, if it's not something that the teacher needs to address, then it's not important, then it won't appear in exam, that kind of thought. But no, we, what we want to do is to build learners uh, into uh, learners who are interested, who want to ask questions, and, and therefore we need to shape our learning environment differently. We want to change our learning environment from a teacher-centered into an inquiry-led, learner-centered learning environment. This helps also because eventually we want them to build a lifelong learning habit. By asking questions, it helps them to start to be curious about things around, to start learning. Now, lifelong learning is not just about going to school. Lifelong learning is also about being a 21st century worker whether is it in uh, admin position, whether is it in an executive position, or eventually if they are leading a business or a company, they need to continuously learn. So having an inquir inquiry mindset will help them along the way. Last but not least, I, I think this is the most important thing for me. Uh, it is rewarding. I am not a teacher, but I volunteer with the Girls' Brigade in Singapore. And part of the Girls' Brigade program required me to teach certain modules. And I realized that when I first started as an officer, I, I teach like any of the teacher. I just stand in front of the class and I share and share and share. And then the students goes back and we just give them a badge. And they, they wear it on their, on their shirt and their uniform. But now I, but along the way, I also realized that I lose their attention. They, they do not know what exactly they were learning. Then after a while, the batch work seems to be just wasted effort. But now I've learned about this, I've changed the way I deliver the content for the batch work. Uh, there are times I ask them to go to a certain website to participate in certain activities. Uh, it could be a game and then come back and we share. There are times where I show them certain recording, may not be necessarily done by me, but it could be somebody else. Now I watch on YouTube and then what they do is they create very simple PowerPoint presentation and come back and share with the rest of the girls. Uh, there are also times that I ask them to create infographic. And I found the interaction with them really a lot more rewarding because now when I talk to them about certain knowledge, we can share with one another and it does engage. And that gives me a lot more pleasure. 
Um, I think for each and every one of you here, if, if you are a teacher or a tutor or a lecturer, you will want your students to interact with you rather than staring at a bunch of chairs that you know, do not talk back to you, that kind, right? So I think for all the reasons that I've given you that may seem to be very important, I think this is one of the most important for a tutor, for a teacher. It is rewarding because you increase interaction and engagement with the students. You will find that uh, they really, when you find them absorbing the content and, and the things that you teach them and applying, you will find that it's really rewarding and enriching for you.